was waiting for Michael to set the camera. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, welcome to our November uh, ASSC session today on uh, professional development on the professional record. And we're so pleased that you're here and have joined us. Um, I'm Cynthia Merritt. I'm the co-chair for this season. I'm the co-chair. The chair for this season. I want to introduce um, our other committee members which are here, which is Marissa Henderson, and she's the co-chair for the year. And Josie, she is the, um, one of the members at large. Um, Tanisha, she could not join us. She had a family issue, um, but she's one of the other members at large. And then Nora, um, she's at another meeting, I guess. I guess she'll be joining us hopefully later. Uh, we also have um, Michelle Fecto. She's here, executive director for the union here, as well as I see Charlie Parrish has walked in, who's the president. And of course, Tammy, she is our uh, multitasking everything person. <laughs> so welcome. Um, I want to introduce our speakers as well. I am so pleased that they were able to ag agree to uh, present today. And we have um, you ready? Sure. Keith, Keith, um, Keith Watley. He is an academic advisor three from the School of Engineering. What, what division are you? Mechanical. Mechanical Engineering. And um, how long have you been here, Keith? Uh, it'll be 25 years in March. Wow, 25 wow. years, he said. So thank you, Keith, for joining us. And then we have, we were supposed, the agenda says uh, Veronica Balat. She had a family emergency, so she couldn't join us, but she uh, so graciously <laughs> um, said her Steve has asked Katrina uh, Ruan, Ruan, yep. Ruan to join us in her, in her absence to present. And she has, she's a, a, a librarian three with the university libraries and has been here for eight years. So welcome them. Um, so I will turn it over to these two. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Keith. Um, we want to recognize any new, newly joined to Wayne academic staff. If it's just raise your hand. Is anyone new to Wayne this year? Wow. Can you say who you are? Can you, yeah. Home? Can we just introduce? Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Brandon Schnood. I work in the Dean of Students' Office, uh, coordinating for student engagement. Hi everyone, I'm Teresa Mittner. I also work in the Union's Office Coordinator for Student Activities. Good afternoon everybody. My name is Carly Braxton. I'm a graduate program coordinator in the College of Engineering. Who else? Hi, I'm Cleo Moody, Academic Advisor in the Department of Communication. And I'm Janelle Lopez and I'm uh, the Program Advisor for a new TRIO Upper Bound Program in the College of Education. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Margaret McEverkin. I'm an academic advisor in the public health program in class. Very nice. And anyone new to the pro thank you so much. Um, let's welcome them. Thank you. As well, anyone new, brand, brand new to the process of either select salary, have never done select salary process before, of course, are maybe our new people and as well as promotion, um, promotion. Who is new, never have done a select salary or promotion process? Okay. Or a professional record. Who has, or pro record. Who, who has their professional record done? Who has it? Who hasn't who had their, who does, who's never done a professional record? <clears throat> All right, good. So hello, everyone. Again, my name is Keith uh, from Engineering. And so we're going to go ahead and get started in regards to the professional record. And so we want to know, we want to answer the question for you guys of what is professional achievement. And it's kind of an interchangeable word between professional development, professional achievement. 
And so basically for professional achievement, for those of us who has professional licenses or uh, certifications, if you're pursuing um, undergraduate, graduate degrees, that's going to fall up under professional achievement. Uh, also, for those of you who are active on professional associations, when you present at those professional associations, that counts as professional achievement. So you want to move beyond just attending those professional association uh, meetings and workshops to presenting at them. So you initially, you may start off as a new academic staff person initially just going, getting the information, and that's perfectly fine. But the goal is for you to move from just um, being a consumer of the information to being a producer. So that's, that's the goal of professional uh, achievement. Uh, what's also important to keep in mind is that depending upon where you are at the university, it may not be a big factor in your particular area if you have professional development and achievement. So you really need to pay attention to what your college and departmental factors are, and that's going to help guide you. But I would even say even more so, what's more important is even if it's not a requirement, uh, as academic staff at the university, I feel that we probably should still engage in these scholarly um, achievement type of activities, just professionally and personally. Um, so it, basically, professional achievement is anything that improves your professional knowledge, your confidence, your skills, and your effectiveness. So when we go to the webinars um, to get information, to find out what's the newest, latest advising topics uh, across um, uh, uh, nationally and even locally, that's important for us to increase our skill set and stay abreast of what's important. So also what's more important is how you use your professional development to advance your profession. Okay, so as Keith mentioned, it's, it's very important that you um, understand the factors in, in your particular areas. So, because they are going to look a little bit different in terms of what, um, how, how things are weighed and, and where different types and categories of professional um, achievement may fall. So this is just an example here of um, the library system factors and Veronica, because again she did all of this for us, um, but she um, highlighted sort of just some of those hints that you can see when you are like taking a look at your factors and becoming familiar with them that are going to help guide your planning for how you're going to approach your professional development and also how you're going to show that in your professional record. This is another thing that um, Veronica was thinking was a really great way of also like thinking about this as a process. So understanding what's expected at each rank within your classification and then kind of drawing like a path for yourself. Um, and this is what she's, she's actually kind of highlighted how you can see here is this example, a librarian one, you know, you want potential to begin establishing a record. When you get to two, a continuing record should be demonstrated in your professional record. By the time you get to three, sort of as a guide mark here, or like a benchmark, you could say statewide and or regional recognition should be showing up in your professional record. And then, of course, getting to four, that highest rank, um, you're looking at professional um, recognition at the statewide, regional, and national levels. So having a clear vision, I think, of where, where you're going, even if you are, say, a, a librarian one rank, for example, but knowing what that looks like, even... Um, a couple promotions down the road, I think, can really help you in terms of getting things set up and understanding, again, like what that what that end goal is. And so, using this as a model for um, academic advisors, especially like with uh, the College of Engineering, we made it very clear. I mean, just like to get to the rank of a three or four, you have to have a master's degree. So it's kind of already built in place the expectations uh, for us to achieve. Um, uh, academically, right? So if you're trying to promote to these levels, you're already going to have to have a master's degree and beyond um, to rank three and rank four. One of the things that we did in the College of Engineering, uh, because again, this is optional. You don't have to, to do this. You don't have to. It's not a requirement for some academic staff outside of librarians and uh, archivists. It's required. They have to publish um, scholarly um, articles and journals. Uh, that's a, a requirement for them, but not necessarily for academic advisors and financial aid officers. It's not a requirement, but if you engage in that scholarly activity, that looks very uh, good for you in terms of when you are going up for promotion in ESS. 
And so specifically what we did was we wanted to put on here um, where on the professional record would you actually see professional achievement listed. And again, pointing to the education piece where we have um, the location of where we're going to put the information for those of us who have our bachelor's, master's degrees, any uh, graduate or undergraduate um, certificates that you might have, any other specialized uh, state level um, certifications that you may have, this is going to be posted officially on your professional record. And then also there's a section that uh, specifically identifies scholarly professional achievements. And again, with the professional record, it's going to be within the last past five years. So you have to make sure that you know, we keep it current uh, for five years. And it's going to talk about the different positions that you can uh, hold or have in professional associations. And we did provide you with a, a pretty comprehensive list to kind of get you started in thinking about uh, various uh, professional associations that you can join and become a part of. And then hopefully the goal is to, to, be, you know, to, to get on, uh, to get involved with those professional associations in some professional capacity. So you can uh, possibly get on working groups, you can uh, help you know, with uh, conferences and that sort of thing. Um, other ideas, uh, places, uh, when you attend conferences, if you do a presentation at those conferences, this is where it's going to be listed on your professional record. Uh, participation, so if you're just a participant, again, think consumer. If you're just sitting in a chair and you're uh, getting the information, you can also, there's still a place for it on your professional record and it's still you'll get credit for that for, for uh, professional achievement. Um, Specifically, when, we, when it comes to research, publication, media efforts, again, for those librarians and archivists, this is where it's going to be really important because they have to do the publishing. And, and if you're an academic staff member, you're an advisor, and you do get published, that's great and awesome. You want to make sure that you highlight that because, again, this is something that can set you apart from your other colleagues. I was just going to say one one. Um, thing to point out. For librarians and archivists, that publication requirement, that scholarly achievement requirement is if you're on the tenure track. Um, if you're not on tenure track, it's it still can count, you know, it's it's like an optional. Um, I do, I've written like one publication. I can probably put that in my dossier. Um, but there is a difference. Yeah, do, I'm sorry, Ricardo. Since we've got some real people in, the distinction between ESS and tenure, most of us are in the room. In fact, right now, we very few, historically, we all had, it was tenure when we first started. There's only four or five individuals right now in our membership, um, academic staff, or who, are, who are currently tenured. Most, will, most are seeking um, yes. ESS. Right. And there's also a portion, and we didn't highlight it here, but at the end of the professional record, uh, where it says public service, there's a section uh, for those of us um, who are engaged in speaking, uh, teaching, like academic courses and counseling. Uh, you want to put that on your professional record uh, as well because that counts as professional achievement. So if you're teaching you know, college level courses, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you highlight that information. And so what does professional achievement look like? Uh, so it's being actively and continually engaged in your profession. So it doesn't stop once you achieve ESS or tenure. Uh, the goal is this is a lifelong process. This is a profession. And so for us to maintain our skills and to be current and up to date, you know, it's important to kind of engage in these professional activities. So professional achievement is, is always going to be important. You want to get the next? Um, oh, are you, are you moving to the next? Time? No, we just. Oh, OK, yeah. OK. Um, yeah, so also, um, I'm sorry, I got a little bit lost in Veronica's so scary. <laughs> um, one of the things that she also wanted to point out in terms of the slide was um, that you, in terms of maintaining and moving through this, what this professional achievement should look like, um, it should look a lot like you're always thinking ahead. Um, so understanding that when you volunteer for things like, um, the various like examples that have been shown here that there is like a certain commitment level involved so if you want to get involved in your professional organization there is going to be this call that's going to come out on a regular basis and that's when you're going to want to you know raise your hand and and, and show up to say like hey that I want to participate in that um, same thing when it comes to presenting um, you know those conference presentation like opportunities come out 
um, pretty far in advance of the conference, so just being aware of that. And again, thinking ahead so that you know when you get your when it's the end of the year and you're turning in your professional record, um, you know that you you're already thinking ahead to like and maybe even have in place the things that are going to be showing up on your next professional record. And some of this we kind of already alluded to and talked about earlier: the fact that presenting papers, po posters, uh, talks, demonstrations, and workshops. These are activities that will qualify and count up under professional achievement. So we just want to make sure that we really know what it involves and what it looks like and making sure that you properly document that on your professional records. Uh, some of us um, at the university and academic staff may have responsibilities to secure research grants. Um, and so that's also something that will qualify up under uh, professional achievement, professional development. So we want to make sure that you understand that, like the folks in the APEX area where um, their jobs are dependent upon research grants. So like if you're involved in that process of writing those grants, securing those grants, you definitely want to make sure that you highlight that. Um, writing for websites and managing social media newsletter and bulletins. Uh, the Advisor Training Academy um, <clears throat> here at the university is really, really good with this piece. So for those advisors on campus, you now have the opportunity to kind of uh, engage in these types of activities. There's always a call out to uh, write a letter, um, uh, write an article for the newsletter. So you want to take advantage of that because this is something that you can put on your professional record and uh, again, this keeps you engaged in, in the profession. Uh, I was also going to just add to Keith mentioned earlier, you know, teaching for courses. Um, we have a few librarians and archivists I know that have taught um, semester long courses, but we also do, um, I get invited to like guest lecture in courses as well, and I'm able to put that as a, a professional achievement um, in my, my category for that. Um, also, this last point here, talking about getting published, if it is something that, that is something that you kind of want to do or if you enjoy writing and writing for, our, for your profession. Um, I like this idea of writing as a team. Um, I would say just in general, most of my professional achievement has been done in sort of a team context. So my, I don't know if I've ever presented solo at a conference. I've done dozens of conference presentations, but it's always been around like a team project. It's been with colleagues. Um, I think as an attendee, it's nicer if there's more than one person talking at you for an hour. And I also just think it, it takes the pressure off of me to be like the only person you know, participating in that. So if that's something that um, you know, you, you want to do, um, I, I don't know, I'm just such a team person. <laughs> I don't want to do anything solo. So, um. yep, I agree totally. Uh, this other piece here about the leadership and professional associations, a lot of us who are <coughs> excuse me, on uh, social media, they have a presence out there on social media. So you can, for example, um, with uh, Facebook, you can join Nakata's uh, page, and that way you're up to date with uh, conferences that are taking place. They do call for papers, and so this is your opportunity uh, to be a presenter at a conference, at a national or local conference. So we gave you a comprehensive list that we passed out, and it's pretty inclusive, so we didn't want to keep it specific just to academic advisors, so it kind of covers uh, some professional associations that are relevant uh, to librarians and archivists, financial aid officers, uh, counselors here at the university. Um, so just, this isn't a um, all-inclusive, it's just like a good running start, and it's also like um, some other professional associations that current academic staff members uh, are a part of and participate. Okay, so when you are um, getting to the point where you're creating your professional record, just some things to kind of keep in mind. Um, you're going to, you really want to set this up so that whoever is reading your professional record sees these activities as, as true achievements. So some of the things you might want to just kind of do is throughout the year, find some sort of system to help you keep track of this. Um, it's pretty overwhelming if you are finally putting your professional record together and you have to like go back through um, a year's worth of activities. So, there's some recommendations around, you know, find, find a way to consistently label your calendar, um, maybe keep an email folder that will help you keep track of some of that, or just a folder in general that you can easily start just dropping little bits of information into so that the process isn't so overwhelming, um, again, when you get to sort of the end of the year. Then, when you are actually listing things in your professional record, provide some very good detail. So, you know, try to avoid, like many of us, we think of our professional organizations in terms of their acronyms, but, you know, as a habit, try to avoid that. Um, give, 
the full detailed information around what you really did. So um, again, if it's a, a presentation, giving the full title, giving your co-presenters, um, just making it clear like where and when you did all of that um, and, and giving those details. And then organize um, within your professional record. So don't make it difficult for the poor people that have to read your professional record because uh, they're probably reading a lot of people's professional records. So if you can just find a way to group similar types of professional achievements together, that, that helps make that more easily digestible. Also, and it, it helps too, because in the back a few slides, in the, the template we have from the provost office, there are those like subheadings. So it's already kind of leading you to group those things together. But then also um, be consistent in, in the, how you're like putting the dates in. Um, we usually recommend that you're going to put that most recent achievement first under a category and then go from there. And you know, just step back and take a look at it. Make sure that if, you're, if you've got a clump of presentations that you're putting in, that you've presented in over the last five years, make sure that you're providing like, consistent information across each of those. That will kind of clue you in as to um, if, you're, if you're on the right track. Right. And it's important to have a colleague look over your professional record. Uh, they may help identify some things that you need to take out or move to a different location in a professional record. Um, or some things that, some items that you may not necessarily think should be on the professional record, this would be your opportunity to kind of have that conversation and figure out where it should go on your professional record. So just having that second eye is also um, a good thing to have. So finding and building opportunity. Uh, if you, I mean, specifically speaking for academic advisors, the um, Advisor Training Academy is awesome. So for those of you who are new to uh, advising here at the university, it is a completely different ball game from some of the old timers who uh, started at the university. It was uh, a different um, method. So this is just talking about how different the profession is today and how much it's grown, and that's uh, in a good direction. So I would definitely advise you to take advantage of uh, the Advising Training Academy. We now offer at the university level one and level two advisor certification. So again, this is very good for um, professional achievement. So if you've already maxed out with the education piece in terms of getting your master's degree and for those of you who are pursuing doctoral degrees, this also is going to qualify up under professional achievement, so we want to highlight that. But if you've already maxed that out, and you're still wondering, like, mm, what can I do? Where do I fit in? I really encourage you to get the level one and level two advisor certification. Uh, they also have things like the advisor book club, the lunch and learn series, uh, the various web webinars that we have uh, through NACAB at the university. All of this is falling up under the advisor training academy. So uh, definitely make sure that you're aware of, well, actually, they have a website, advisortraining.wayne.edu. Unfortunately, again, it's very um, specific to advisors. It's not as inclusive for um, other categories of academic staff. However, even if, even if you're not an advisor, I think they still have useful information that will apply even if you're not officially in that category of an advisor at the university. I have a question. Yes, ma'am? Do you want me to wait till the end? Uh, no, it's fine. Okay. So I have a question about the maintaining certifications and professional licenses. Yes. What if, like for example, um, I work at Counseling and Psychological Services, so I have to have a professional license in order to Correct. work there. Yes. Um, would that still be considered professional achievement, maintaining it when it's something I need to have? It's not something extra, it's like something I need to have. Right, that, that's that iffy, you know, gray area because, yeah, so Ricardo, go ahead. Place on the top of, there's a place on the top of the professional record for licensure. Can I ask a question on that? Do you have to take continuing credit courses? Yeah, am I with it? Yeah, that counts. Yeah, that those yeah. courses. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, what? What? I'm sorry. Go so, ahead, Michelle. Michelle. I'm sorry, the Michelle. Would you, would you mind oh, I'm sorry. That? I apologize. So I was asking if you have to take continuing courses or credits to maintain. Maintain it, right. Um, some, so some people at CAPS do based on their license at the state requirement that they have to do continuing education. So if you're doing that continuing education, I would That counts as professional achievement. Okay. Right. Okay. 
So but if it's required for your, yeah, if you have to do additional coursework and classes, and for, for example, like for uh, mental health certification, we have to do that every three years, right? And so every time you recertify, that counts as a professional achievement. Okay. So this is an example of um, just sort of like a, a cheat sheet document that we put together within the libraries that kind of help us look at our factors and like a quick table. And I think you guys got this as a handout, right? Or yep. not this one, but a different one that Veronica put together that speaks a little bit more broadly to everybody um, coming off of the guidelines okay. from, um, the, yeah, the, from, the, thank you, Pete, from the Provost website. So we were kind of suggesting that you, you may want to consider doing this um, based on you know, your own factors and your own requirements as you're, you're looking um, at putting your professional record together. And, you know, some of the things that you want to consider is just, this is a good reminder. It helps, I, I have to go back to this every year, really, um, but it reminds me of exactly, like, you know, it's this whole idea of ask yourself. So when you, you're thinking about this activity that you did, um, you know, take, take some time to figure out what category um, this is going to best belong in. Um, you know, we're always trying to, in the libraries, at least I've always been coached to like put as much as I can under my job performance. Um, so things that I can tie to that, um, it may be that I go to a webinar and that could be like a professional achievement, but if it's super closely tied to my job, like if it's on um, Psych Info, the psychology database that I'm really required to be very proficient in as the psychology librarian, then I can kind of, I can put that toward job because if Psych Info has undergone some big changes, I need to know that to do my job. Um, so. Think about that as you are um, maybe putting together, you can put together like this cheat sheet for yourself to help you, again, just be a little bit, make it easier for you to identify what, what goes where. Um, other tips that I think Veronica wanted me to mention would be um, just, you know, strive for some balance across these different categories. Um, understand how they're weighed and what that, sh how that work should be represented in terms of what your overall professional record looks like. So um, you don't want to look like you're doing, you know, more service than you're doing your actual job. Um, that's going to cause some interesting uh, discussion and discussions, and it also just doesn't make you maybe like the best colleague. So keep that in mind. Um, ask a lot of questions if you if it's unclear to you where to put something. Okay, that is that's pretty critical. Um, even in the libraries where we have um, there's many of us that are represented um, through academic staff. We still have to go around and ask questions, um, and you know, new at least in, in the library profession, new stuff's coming up all the time. Like new parts of our job, or things that haven't really been done before, or haven't been a regular part of our work. So that leads to very interesting discussions um, with our colleagues in terms of where does this work fit? How do we demonstrate this in our professional record? So I know that not everybody has a large group of colleagues the way that I do, where I'm really fortunate that there's you know this big body of librarians I can go to, but do find people. <laughs> find people and ask questions ahead of time. Um, and I think, too, if you're new to putting together a professional record, just, again, have, like Keith mentioned, have someone look at it before you turn it in. You know, flag the things that you had questions about that you just made your best judgment on. Run those back by somebody. Because I think that all um, will really help, help you form, again, like your own just your, for your own sanity, that you put this together the best that you can based on um, on the information that you have. Right. And so it's kind of important to not double dip. So a lot of times what we see is that people will put um, service activities and try to loop those up under professional achievement. And so just being cognizant of learning exactly where the right information go on your professional record, that's kind of like uh, important. So that concludes the official portion for the professional record, and now we're going to open it up for those of you who have questions. Yes, sir. Um, if we're taking coursework, where will we put that under the professional achievement? That's going to be up under the education piece that you're currently pursuing um, a, a degree. Would you list individual courses? I wouldn't list individual courses, but just that you're presu uh, pursuing uh, a bachelor or a master's degree. Okay, because there was something on there that said to list courses by name and semester and all that stuff on one of your slides. In the libraries, we, we tend to, people will list individual courses. Yeah. Um, that they take or that they teach? That they take and teach, actually. So. 
Where, where would they go? Would it be under education for the librarians? That is a good question. Usually on the front page, yeah, usually that education, don't you put right. your degree that you've earned? Right. If you're working on one, you can say in progress exactly. or anticipated graduate. And that's what, yeah, that's what, so what's, what's your category? Are you an advisor or? Well, I'm an academic service officer, but I'm okay. working on the graduate certificate in archival administration. So okay. I've been taking classes every semester for the last couple of years. Okay. But I just have that I'm pursuing their certificates. So right, and that's fine. Well the, yeah. Yeah, that, that's appropriate. appropriate. Yeah. Can you guys share, because um, I think there's some, um, a little bit of challenge on what are some, exa uh, some examples of, other than what's been, been discussed here, some like good examples of what um, outside of like that, kind of the, what, you, what you've been mentioning, um, like a, a, pr a presentation or other items that can be either pro a professional development achievement or service because I think there's some challenge on deciding okay kind of the obvious which is a great presentation here um, on like being a presenter and, and contributing to the field that way and going to conferences but do you guys know any other that have experienced any other professional achievement other than classwork as well um, that you can share that's like a you will like a best practice which we know is a presentation or even service, because I yeah. think there's a, a line as well between service because some, some uh, someone did just asked me today, is, is service outside of the university? Is that like something that that's looked at as more weightier or? You know what I mean? But so I did allude to that earlier that there is a section at the end of the professional record that says public service, and so that's where you would identify that information. So for those of you who are into more volunteering, for example, if you do any volunteer work, you, that's going to fall up under that category. But keep in mind, because we're academic staff, your functions and responsibilities should be more um, academic related than service. So you don't want to spend so much time on the service piece at the expense of your professional achievement and your job responsibilities. Uh, those are the, the more weighted um, areas in terms of for promotion. So it's not to say that those activities uh, that we do for service are not important. They are too, but you can find that some, some records have so much service and not enough in other important categories. Yes. Just, just a couple of, you know, to address Cynthia's question. I've presented at conferences, but it's not my favorite thing. Um, so there's a couple other ways to approach it. Um, conference committees is a good one. So it's just sort of a, it's a shorter term thing. You're participating, you're helping plan something. Um, being on a board of an organization, I think we sort of mentioned that, but, but um, they're usually like a two to three year term, so Miyakata or ACPA Michigan, that kind of thing. Um, and then another one that hadn't occurred to me for a long time in my career was book reviews. Um, I know a couple of people in the room have done these um, through Nakata. They, they post opportunities all the time. You can sort of review what books they have available, see if anything appeals to you. And it's, it's a way to get published that's a little bit um, out, of, of, out of standard what we think of when we think of publishing. Right. Exactly. There's a few. Yeah, I was going to mention book reviews. Um, I've also done, um, it was like pseudo being an advisor for an encyclopedia and like an editor almost, just kind of like going through and helping them plan what entries were going to be in a published encyclopedia, um, which was just like a bizarre opportunity that fell into my lap, but I immediately kind of knew I was like, oh, that will count. So um, that's, that's a great one. Um, also, just we mentioned on one of the slides, um, Kind of the social networking aspects or you know many of our professional organizations have a web presence um, in a variety of different ways so even helping write blog posts or editing um, in that capacity if that's something you're really comfortable with there's a group of people that tend to really not want to do that work <laughs> um, so uh, that's a, that's a really great opportunity you had your hand back there yeah what we also would reviews if you are affiliated with NASA I'm not sure ACPA does the same thing but they make the mission goals for the higher ed uh, professionals reviewing programs is, is a volunteer opportunity that, especially if you were, if you haven't presented yet, a really good way to see what do typical presentations have in terms of the structure, not just having attended them, but the back end, the learning objectives, the components. You can volunteer um, to review for regional or national uh, conferences. is a good way to 
give that kind of behind the scenes of what the structure was like. Yeah, and he could create yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And within the libraries, our professional organizations are always looking for those program reviewers as well. Because it requires you to have awareness of the professional context, but then not just the institutional organizations. So it's great development. And just through social media today, I just got a notification that there was a call for papers. And so again, these are all activities that, you know, in my normal day to day, I may not have run across this, but because uh, of the social media presence, I'm able to immediately get the information, see when it's due, and if it's something that I'm actually interested in and have the time for, I can commit to that, that particular activity. And so that's something easy. Today, most people are engaged in some form of social media. So it's an easy way for you to just, you know, um, follow or become friends with these professional associations to find out about those opportunities and then kind of navigate and go, go from there. Uh, and I also wanted to bring up the fact that ASPDC, we were just having this exact same conversation about the types of activity that will fall up under professional development achievement. And so some of the welcome back and um, events that we might put on, those are not, those don't count and qualify as professional development or professional achievement. And sometimes that shows up on people's professional record. That's not what you want to put on a professional record. Um, and so we're trying to really narrow down and get real clear on uh, putting forth uh, professional development in the true sense of the word. Can you repeat that one more time? I'm just taking notes for other people. Oh, yeah, yeah. About the ASPDC portion, uh, uh, the A for ASPDC, we were having a conversation about professional development and the fact that uh, on some professional records, you'll, you'll put down that people who have attended Welcome back breakfast or um, the uh, awards. Uh, award ceremony or uh, attending the, uh, what is the, in June every year we do it where you get the massage and it's more of a social activity that's not necessarily professional development at all. But again, those activities are important, um, but it doesn't qualify and shouldn't be on a professional record. And that's what, what, what's really important. Unless you organize it. Unless you organize it, that's different. I would just say one more thing about a lot of this is that I just think um, volunteering with a professional organization is almost like one of the best things I think you can do because that's going to get you to meet people and it's going to get you exposure to like how this achievement looks within that professional organization. And I know that that's how I've met a lot of people that do similar work to me but don't do it here at Wayne State and then I've been able to build those relationships and you know co-present with them you know, many years later and, um, and still kind of maintain you know these really rewarding professional relationships that happen more broadly and that helps you you know with your promotion it helps you with your achievement it helps you in so many different ways so um, professional in my experience and I'm pretty involved in a few professional organizations and libraries um, they don't usually say no if you want to volunteer to help them out and do that work so um, if you have time to do that, and that, that's something you hear about an opportunity to interest you, just raise your hand, particularly as, a, as someone who's new in the profession. It's like the best way to just get to meet people. Well, thank you so much to Keith and Katrina. And we're here. <laughs> I want to introduce uh, Michelle Fecto. She's going to come up um, and talk about um, support for going to these type of events and being involved in professional development and Michelle. And then we can continue with the questions. <laughs> Gotta get out of the camera. Um, <clears throat> so um, the union office from time to time gets calls from uh, academic staff that they have a uh, a supervisor who is not very um, flexible with their time and that doesn't understand the importance of them doing their professional achievement or service. Um, and sometimes I mean, I've had people who say they, can, uh, they can't even come to these events. They're not allowed to you know, structure the time to come to an event like the ASSC. And those, if you, if you are having trouble with those types of things, um, you know, give the union office a call. And because that should be straightened out. And it should be straightened out because it's going to affect your ability to get promoted. It's going to affect your ability to have a good selective salary a review and all kinds of things. So it's, it's in the con union contract. And these are, um, it's an understanding with the administration and the union that you should be given this time to do this. I also wanted to let you know that in the union contract, there is a very little known um, stash of money um, it's in Article 24 
uh, that is for professional development for academic staff. So sometimes there's issues of cost, and then the ASPDC, which is also negotiated into the contract that there should be um, uh, scholarship money available to help on travel costs and, and registration to these conferences, so you can apply to the ASPDC, but there's also this other bit of money. So if, if that's an issue, you should definitely let us know. And Ricardo, you want to say? For those with ESS. For those with ESS, thank you. For those with ESS, this, the, uh, the 25,000. The ASPDC one is for anyone. Yeah. Um, and for the ASPDC, that one is for $800, and I'll be um, over that process um, starting in January. So, okay. uh, well, I, well, one of two people, but uh, yeah, so it's $800, and up to, up we are in a, up to $800, up to $800. <laughs> Right. And we're in the process of changing the rules a bit, so it will look a little different in the future. Okay. So, um, and if there's any uh, other questions that you might have, like where do you find your factors? University has factors and they have guidelines um, that also talk about uh, um, what is expected at different ranks and things like that. Um, if your depart, if your college or department doesn't have them, you can reference <clears throat> the ones at the university. But every college and department should have them. Um, if not, you can use a job description. But So if you have any other more technical questions, don't hesitate to uh, reach out to the union and uh, know that this is in the contract. So if you have a supervisor who's coming up and saying something completely different, check check with us. Because they a lot of time chairs and uh, directors are not trained on academic staff um, uh, rules and regulations and they have, and they we have to train them. We have to train them. Yes, Ricardo. The, uh, when these have come up in the past, the, our conference and the provost office have been usually supportive to help correct the yeah. issue. But, but with the two that are there now, um, Boris, who we've many of you have met, and mm -hmm. Louis, you know, they're even more on the, from their, their direct proposal, more on the side of promoting us. So I know from our conversation with them, they're actively trying to push and correct that with right. the chairs and directors and the new chair honey. So again, if you, you're here, so chances are you didn't have to fight to get here, but if you are familiar with other colleges or other departments in your, in your area who couldn't get away or they're told, you know, you're really just not time for this because there's too much work to do, please let them know, take them to us, and yeah. should be good. Yeah, Helen. I just wanted to say that um, uh, those of you that are new, uh, my name is Helen Wilson, and I'm the academic staff liaison. So if you're hearing all these acronyms, ASPDC, ASSSC, and it's like, you know, sounds like alphabet soup or something, um, just, you know, look me up, AI5620 at wayne.edu, and I can explain some of these things and, you know, kind of help get you uh, connect to different places. Sometimes people have said, hey, I need more service, and I can, you know, kind of tell you, you know, what groups might be needing people or kind of, you know, what's up. And I'm meeting regularly with uh, Anne-Marie and, you know, we're working on different types of projects. So if you want to kind of know a little bit more or kind of get the scoop on things, I can help you. So um, thanks, Helen. And the, the, this uh, body as well does a session. We'll be doing a session on those acronyms as well to explain what, a, what all those acronyms, because I, I know it can be confusing. But Ricardo, can you explain a little bit about, maybe Helen, you can um, uh, jump in, the positions of, of Anne-Marie and Morris to uh, their new, kind of newly. Yeah, they were previously held by John Vanderwey and Ellen Barton for a um, And it had been the, act, the associate <coughs> for academic personnel. The provost changed those titles, added two people, and put, replaced academic personnel with faculty. Immediately received pushback from the union, from the academic senate, from anybody who got in front of them. Um, both of them have gotten the message and are actively working to make sure that not only are they in the program, including academic staff, but in their messaging and reaching out. So you've seen, many of us have seen things that are coming out um, that say faculty and academic staff. Um, they're both aware of it. I've said it in an odd way, it actually is making that part of the university even more likely to be responsible for us because they've been put on notice. We still have to see how things work out. I don't think things are 
been a seismic shift in where we where we fall as academic staff within that, that confusion on our chair, but at least they're both actively aware and talking about it. So we'll see what how that goes. But Boris is the one who handles our contractual issues. Um, to work with that. Anne Marie is supposed to be on just the development for faculty management staff, so it shouldn't be on things that cause it, but there's, there's overlap in a lot of those things. Um, so we're also, it's a new dynamic of the two individuals and a somewhat external, but the union leadership is paying close attention and expressed concerns that we want to should. It, it works to our benefit and doesn't take Thank you so much, Tom and Carlo. As we're wrapping up, I just want to, are there any more questions? So everyone knows how to do the professional record, professional development, and they know what they're going to do. I just want to underline um, something that Michelle and um, Katrina and Keith were saying about um, contacting and networking with other colleagues in your, in your area, and this staff, academic staff in the union. Um, because I think that's so important to uh, extend the, your arms to others in other departments, especially for departments who are by yourself, um, to have that contact and reach, um, because that's so important. I want to underline as well um, the mentoring program here. The, there's a uh, academic mentoring, what's that called? I think it's the academic staff mentoring, mentoring program. Mentoring where um, Keith was saying, or one of you guys was saying about having a review of your, someone look at your professional record. I think that's so important to have a mentor so you can be able to you know, continue to get feedback about you know, what goes on there and, and such. So I think they're having a program as well. That's the provost office. And Nada Simon, historically, who was an academic staff member, she's an ASL4, I think, with a PhD been here many, many years. She is very much involved with that, and it's a really good program, especially for newer academic staff that don't really know all of this stuff. You're paired up with someone that's been here a minute that can help you, as, as Cindy right. was saying, look over your stuff and make sure you're not missing any deadlines if promotion is coming up and that kind of thing. Yeah. I think it's Matt now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I think it's Matt now. Uh -huh. They just had the matchup. Um, oh, they did? Okay, good. Oh, yeah, that was last week, two weeks ago? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Good. So we have some announcements as well. I just wanted to mention um, that we are having our ASSC annual holiday next month party. So we will be putting the announcement that is open um, on the Academica reservation. So you can now go and sign up for that. It's going to be on December 19th, which is a Wednesday, um, at the Union Street. Is it called the Union Street or Union, Union Street? Street. Street. <laughs> Union Street, which is on Woodwork. And we hope that you um, join us for some cheer and some wishes and some holiday uh, fun and just mingling and getting to know. That's one way that you can get to know your colleagues that we don't 